First of all, I wanted to um, thank you for agreeing to do this uh, video interview with BioNews. Okay, this is Deborah Miller, CEO of uh, Kirdu Chen. Thank you very Co much. Co-founder and CEO, right? Yes. Okay. Um, maybe just for the uh, for our viewers, you can explain how you started Kirdu Chen and why. Sure. When our son Hawken was born, we realized that things weren't quite right with him, and we got a diagnosis that he had Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So we searched to find an organization to participate with because we knew we would want to be very active trying to find a cure for this disease. And we really couldn't find an organization that was focused on, on research. And so we started Cure to Shin to find a cure within his lifetime. And how long ago did you start Cure to Shin? So Hawkins was diagnosed in uh, late 2002 and we started Cure to Shin at the very end of 2003. And it's set up as a 501c3, correct? Yes, Cure to Shin is a 5013c organization. So um, there are several organizations that deal with muscular dystrophy in general. The Muscular Dystrophy Association, Parent Project, yourselves, uh, and, and maybe half a dozen others that I've come across. How, what makes Cure to Shin distinct or unique compared to the others? So Cure to Shin has a, a different a business model. We started off with venture philanthropy very early on, understanding that even if every single family that was affected by Duchenne would participate by marathon runs and bake sales or whatever, it would be a drop in the bucket for the amount of money that was needed to bring drugs forward to, to find a cure. And so we focus on identifying really early science that um, we, through our due diligence and our scientific uh, vetting, found that um, it was very promising and so we would fund relatively small amounts to these early stage companies and then act as a catalyst so we would, we would basically de-risk the science and act as a catalyst so that the pharmaceutical companies biotech companies and venture philanthropy companies would come in afterwards with the you know the millions and millions of dollars that it would take to drive it forward into clinical trials when you started cure duchenne there was nothing on the market when, when we started Cure Duchenne, there was nothing on the market. There was no clinical trial. Um, we, we knew about um, stop codon read-through with, with PTC, and um, exon skipping was being talked about and researched, you know, in the labs, but, but not even a clinical trial. So basically, when, uh, when Hawking was born and, and eventually diagnosed, it was like, you know, good luck, you're on your own, enjoy, enjoy him while it lasts, right? And there was no... There was no hope, basically. So when he was diagnosed, we were in the doctor's office, and I remember the doctor wouldn't even look at him. He, he had him stand up from the ground, and he basically said, your, your son has Duchenne muscular dystrophy. He's going to stop walking when he's probably 10 years old, and he won't live past 18. And all you can do is go home and love your child. Does that doctor know about Hawkins' success? Um, so we, we, we no longer, we, we, we did not go back to that doctor. And I think that he probably is aware of it. Because now, these days, they're saying average boys with Duchenne can expect to live maybe 26 years, and some, as you well know, live much longer than that. That's true. So the life expectancy has expanded. However, um, you know, we can't be complacent about that because the quality of life still continues to degrade um, once they lose ambulation. Right. In the case of your son, he's done quite well. I mean, he's you know, a journalism student, traveled around the world, etc. I mean, he's, he's unusual, I mean, right? Compared to average boys with Duchenne, he, he, he's not overweight. I've seen him. He's, he's, he's on steroids, right? He's on steroids. Okay. But, I mean, he, he has a good diet. He looks, he looks strong. He looks very good. So, I'm wondering, what, what can we learn from his experience? You talk to other parents of children with Duchenne, and their sons are, are, are obese. They're, you know, they're, they're, and some of them are on steroids, and they're, that's caused their obesity, they say. What, what kind of advice can you give them as far as quality of life? So for quality of life, if I had to summarize the success we've had, it would be called discipline. Uh, discipline on many fronts. Um, obviously, the diet. So we, we found out that steroids can cause weight gain. And so we made a very concentrated effort to watch his diet. Um, before before we, I would give him dinner, I would sit him down at the dinner table with a big bowl of steamed broccoli in front of him. And he wouldn't get dinner until he ate the broccoli. And so we just, 
you know, we were a little extreme, but we really forced good nutrition. And uh, from, you know, Sunday night through Thursday night, it was um, steamed vegetables and grilled fish and meat and chicken. And it was, we were really, really strict on his diet. We, well, that didn't sound so bad, no? Well, no, um, but there were, there were no sodas, um, you know, and, and Nothing low, sweet, no sugar at all? Occasionally, you know, occasionally. But it got to the point where he, he adopted those habits. And even now, you know, once he went away to school, we gave him quite a lecture that we were afraid that he was really going to gain weight because he was not, I was cooking for him. And he actually lost weight because he was so busy at college that he would forget to eat, which wasn't a good thing. In fact, we had to actually put a little bit more weight back on him. But I think it just goes to show that it is possible in, in many cases. And I know that a lot of kids have different metabolisms. And, yes. But it does take work, but I think it is possible to help. And then uh, we also uh, were fortunate to be able to get a prescription for growth hormone for him. And that helped him not only have a little bit of height, um, but also it increased his lean muscle mass and his bone density, which is really good. And, you know, fortunately, he's not had a fracture, um, which so many boys have, um, which can also, you know, accelerate the loss of ambulation. What, uh, what is, uh, what's his uh, height? I, I think Hawkins is about 5'4 now. Okay. Yeah. Has he lost some, uh, lost some height over time? No, no, he, he's, um, no, in fact, I was just looking at a Facebook uh, memory picture that came up yesterday of when we took him for his college tour, yes. which is five years ago, and he looks so little, so so I think he's actually even grown a little bit since he went oh, off to college. Okay. Just um, a question, uh, you mentioned about uh, discipline and diet. Some of the parents of Duchenne boys that I met at your conference told me that they didn't really like giving their son steroids because of the weight gain that it causes, and not just that, but the weakening of the bones. Uh, yes. Do you, are you a strong advocate of steroids despite that? I am a strong advocate of steroids. I think until we find something better, it's the best we have. And he's been on daily dose, and um, he's been on Fosamax, which is a osteoporosis drug, and I think it's helped him. So I believe that there are ways to mitigate the side effects of steroids. Now, one good side effect of steroids is that it does um, inhibit growth, right? And um, you met my husband, who's yes. six foot five. Yeah, he's a tall guy. Hawken, Hawken was 11 five when he was born, and he was he was destined to be this huge guy. He was 11? 11, 11 pounds, five ounces. Yes. And so, so the steroids, you know, actually kept him from getting to a height that, you know, he couldn't manage. I, I believe he would have stopped walking sooner if, you know, he had been at his full height. And so I do believe that there is a beneficial side effect of steroids, um, but it helps also to be able to counter that with growth hormone to get a little bit of height. So that What else is he taking besides uh, steroids? So, um, he's not taking growth hormone anymore because he, he made the decision that he thought that he was at a good height. Um, he takes um, a Plarinone for his heart and Losartan for his heart. So we can say he takes heart medication. Yes. Yeah, we're, we don't know, we're not going to go into de too much yes. detail about that. He takes heart medications. Yes. What about dietary supplements or any kind yes, of? Yes, he takes. He vitamins, takes. Calcium, he takes. He takes D. a lot. He takes a lot of supplements: okay. calcium, vitamin D, okay. arginine, um, you know, protandum, a lot okay. of a lot of supplements. I wanted to ask you a little bit about. Um, Hawking and the fact that he he he's a cheerful kid. I mean, and he's and, he, and he's obviously a, a adventurous and went to Mexico and did this report about immigration. Um, do, do you believe that he is able to inspire other kids with Tuchin? I think Hawking um, has inspired other kids. Uh -huh. I I know that um, I think he gives hope to a lot of the, the parents, um, at least that I see you know on Facebook and, and interact with. Right. Um, I think that he has. Um, he inspires me. I can tell you that um, he he doesn't get down, or if he does, he's he's figured out a way to get back in the game. And part of that, he's yeah. so so busy. He has a lot going on. Yeah, I and noticed. and and he loves his independence. In fact, um, he's you know got an internship, and he was looking for an apartment. And I was trying to encourage him to stay in a in a nice part of town. And he was explaining that he couldn't afford it. And when I you know insisted that we you know subsidize. He's like, no, mom, I'm, I'm, you know, you're not paying for anything. Yeah. 
good for him. I know. Uh, I wanted to ask also just about Cure Du Shen and your business model, the fact that you actually invest in companies. Yes. And then, like you mentioned uh, last time we spoke about Exonix, can you talk about that, that version of venture capital, which Cystic Fibrosis Foundation also you know, sure. kind of pioneered that uh, years ago? Yeah. Talk about that, please. So, so we actually um, you know, started our venture philanthropy model you know, shortly after cystic fibrosis did, right. one, one of the big differences is they have had a few more zeros on, on the ends of, of, the, of their returns. <laughs> they, they started off with a lot more revenue. Um, so, so we, we, you know, I'll, I'll focus now on this conversation just with the gene therapy, including right. the CRISPR, because we now have five companies that have actually moved forward. Um, you know, the regarding exonics. This was um, CRISPR technology that Dr. Eric Olson. Eric Olson, University of Texas. Yes, Austin. yes, that he um, pioneered. And so we actually did um, a lot of due diligence on you know what we thought the best science was for CRISPR and um, started working with Eric. And we actually co-founded a company with Eric where Cure Shin provided the seed funding. Right. And then he's you know the chief scientific officer. That's five million dollars? Um, it was actually only two million because what happened, the commitment was five million. Uh-huh. And then we, we put in, it was to be paid in tranches. And by the point we got to two million, um, a venture capital firm, the Column Group, came in and did a $40 million Series A. And so, right. um, okay. you know, we, we didn't have the opportunity to invest the rest of that. But it's turned out to be, um, you know, a very good relationship. And they're moving forward. They've got 50% dystrophin skeletal muscle mm -hmm. of the animal model, 90% dystrophin in the heart. So, you know, it's still new technology, but, right. you know, it's, it's looking good. Talk a bit uh, for our audience about Cure Du Chen's programs uh, and events around the country. Sure. Okay, so Cure Du Chen Cares is our education and outreach program. And it started off very organic where we had a physical therapist that was helping keep Hawking mobile and walking and doing such a good job. And families around the country were asking for somebody like Jennifer Wallace to come and treat their kids. And so we put together a road show and it's just kind of grown and grown and grown from that. So we now have a certification program for physical therapists to teach them on the specialty of Duchenne. And so we do um, about five workshops for P PTs and they can get certified so that families know in their particular geographical area where they can right. go to get good care and then we have um, 20 what we call sessions which are dinner events where families can get together and um, have we have a speaker a guest speaker right. and then it ena enables them to get together and communicate and share information we had one and network. in Ohio recently right Columbus, we did and uh -huh. yeah and now in LA yeah, yeah. and then we have um, our workshops right. which are um, full-day events and we have again guest speakers and um, education for the families, how to how to, to stretch their kids, everything from nutrition to good care. And our scientist, Mike Kelly, comes and, and talks about research and clinical trials. We have our pharma sponsors come and present. And Brenda Wong also, right? Brenda Wong, yes. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. And then Futures, which um, we were able to attend last year, is going to be in Anaheim this year, October 11th through the 13th at we'll Disney, Disneyland. Oh. And Brenda Wong will be there again, and Eric okay. Olson will be speaking. Oh, good. And okay. so we'll have, again, panels on gene therapy, gene editing, exon skipping, plus all the clinical trial information. And it's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be a very uplifting. And, and the reason we call it Futures is because everything that we're looking for is to improve the future of these, these kids' lives. Do you also work with the Muscular Dystrophy Association? So we, we, have, we have partnered with MDA. Um, on some of our, our workshops, and it's been wonderful. Um, so, it, you know, from a kind of a ground, a, a boots on the ground level, yes. Because we, next week in Orlando, you're aware of the conference? I'll be there. Oh, I'll be there too. I'll be okay. there, yes. Could you, uh, maybe we could just talk a bit about gene therapy and the hope that it may offer for Duchenne. Sure. So, we are obviously very excited about gene therapy. Um, so, I, I talked about Exonics and CRISPR. Right. Um, one of the projects that we funded at uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital in 2010, 2013, 2017. So we funded over a million dollars um, with a gene therapy, which is like permanent exon That's skipping. That's Jerry uh, Mendel, right? Well, it's actually Kevin Flanagan. Kevin Flanagan. Yeah. Okay. And so we, we basically went all the way from helping him, funding him to 
um, design a mouse that has this particular mutation right. all the way to getting proof of concept to go into a clinical trial. And just, I think on Thursday, Adentes um, announced that they are licensing that to oh. take it into clinical trials and okay. they should be going in before the end of the year into a clinical trial for his technology. Great. So we're really excited about that, that investment of ours early on. Okay. Another one is um, uh, Bamboo Therapeutics. So we, we invested in that back in 2016 and then Pfizer bought them that same year. Really excited um, to hear the results. They'll be um, announcing their discipline results, I believe, in um, the summer. And um, They're part of Pfizer now? They're part of Pfizer, yes. Okay. And Pfizer, being Pfizer, um, is very quiet mm -hmm. and yeah. they're extremely conservative. They don't they don't talk about things until they're ready, and so we've had no no leaks, no indications at all, except I know a couple of the families that have their kids on this drug or the therapy, and they seem very happy. Okay. So, on that note, we'll, we'll wrap up. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you're happy, and I'm nice to see some progress. Okay, is that okay. what you wanted to... Yeah, I think so. That's okay. great. Okay? Is that too self-serving here? Thanks very much. <laughs>